Bernie Sanders is now favored to win the Democratic nomination. Thank you, New Hampshire. He may become America's first self-described socialist president. Although lately, Sanders doesn't talk about revolutionary socialism. When I talk about democratic socialism, I'm not looking at Venezuela. I'm not looking at Cuba. Not anymore. But Sanders has a long track record of praising violent socialist revolutions. I went through hours of Sanders' old speeches, and they reveal a lot about what Sanders believes. Everybody was totally convinced that Castro was the worst guy in the world, that all the Cuban people were going to rise up in rebellion against Fidel Castro. They had forgot that he educated their kids, gave them health care, totally transformed the society. You know, not to say that uh, Fidel Castro or Cuba are perfect. Not perfect? What Castro did was bad enough that thousands of people died trying to escape in makeshift rafts. Cuba is one of the poorest countries in the region. The average Cuban lives on $2 a day. But Sanders focuses on other things. When Castro came to power, they did a lot to eliminate illiteracy in that country. So yes, you know, you don't have to praise everything about Fidel Castro. It's a dictatorship. It's a poor economy. We want changes. But have some good things been done in Cuba? Yes. Cubanos. Sanders downplays the fact that Castro's government tortured and murdered thousands of people and stole most private property. Sanders had a soft spot for other socialist countries, too. He chose to hold his honeymoon in the Soviet Union. This video shows Sanders singing with his Soviet host. This was filmed by the government-funded TV station in Sanders' hometown. Uh -oh. What are we going to say? When Sanders returned from Russia, he had lots of praise for the Soviet Union. Extremely impressed by their public transportation system. In fact, it was the cleanest, most effective mass transit system that I've ever seen in my life. He found a lot to like about the socialist country. In our country, we also have a housing crisis. We were there to say, yeah, we have problems, you have problems. There are strengths to your system, there are strengths to our system. Our goal was let's take the strengths of both systems. Now, Sanders did qualify his support, calling the Soviet Union authoritarian and totalitarian. He was more enthusiastic about Nicaragua's socialist revolution. There, the Sandinistas overthrew the country's dictator. They indoctrinated people and imposed other socialist policies, like what they called land reform, giving for the first time in their lives real land to farmers so that they can have something that they grow. Nobody denies that they are making a significant progress. Former landowners denied that it was progress. They'd had their land stolen, but they were rich people. Rich people, needless to say, who used to have the good life there, are not terribly happy. As a socialist, the word socialism does not frighten me, and I think it's probably fair to say that the Nicaraguan government is primarily a socialist government. What about the poverty that socialism helped create? As American journalists talk about how bad a country is because people are lining up for food. That's a good thing. In other countries, people don't line up for food. The rich get the food and the poor starve to death. When the Nicaraguan government inaugurated its socialist leader, Daniel Ortega, it invited Sanders. It's unbelievable to say that a mayor of a city of 38,000 is now the highest ranking American to visit them during the celebration of their revolution. Not that unbelievable, since others attending include dictators like Fidel Castro, the vice president of the Soviet Union. That didn't dampen Sanders' enthusiasm. How do you find the sincerity of Sandinista leaders? I was impressed. Now, obviously, I will be attacked by every editorial writer in the free press for being a dumb dupe. Uh, Maybe I am. Uh, I was impressed by their intelligence and by their sincerity. Ortega is an impressive guy. Impressive? Nicaragua quickly fell further into poverty, and the socialists were voted out. Now Ortega's back in power, and even CNN agrees he's terrible. Authoritarian ruler Daniel Ortega looked to silence dissent, putting gunfire and snipers against locals. Maybe Sanders was a dumb dupe about Ortega. But after Sanders' second trip to Nicaragua, the country's problems were unmistakable. But Sanders didn't blame socialism. He blamed the U.S. The terrible economic suffering being experienced by the Nicaraguan people as a result of the U.S. government financed war against them. Since Sanders got into Congress, he's mostly stopped praising violent socialist revolutions. 
But he's never taken back the extensive praise he's given to all sorts of socialist regimes. I was impressed by the youth programs that they have, cultural programs which go far beyond what we do in this country. So when Sanders now says he's merely a democratic socialist, keep in mind how he's long praised violent socialist regimes. I hope you like these videos. They're free, but they're not cheap. Please help us make more. Click on this button.